Good afternoon to you. Mark Stoddard Hurricane Track here, Friday now, the 19th of September, 2025. Good to be back with you. Was off a couple of days. Got a little bit of a late summertime cold. No big deal. Just annoying. Knocked me down a couple of pegs, but well enough today to get in here and talk about how will all of this end. What a weird hurricane season it has been. We're going to take a look at where we've come from, so the past, what we know, and then a little bit of a gander into the future and how all of this might end up finishing as we round out the next couple of months of the Atlantic hurricane season. All right, so let's get started, shall we? First, let's take a look at the ACE score and the overall climatological background that we're looking at and all of that good stuff. And uh, we started off with Andrea way back in June, and we are now up to Gabrielle, and our ACE is sitting right over here at about 40. ACE, of course, the accumulated cyclone energy, that metric right there, that's telling us how the quality of each individual storm was. And you can tell this one right here, that's Aaron, that's the highest quality and longest lasting of the tropical cyclones in the Atlantic Basin thus far. You can also see that we are clearly below average right now, and uh, we were really skyrocketing when we had Aaron. And then things flatlined, as we have seen, around this same time, the last few years, 2022 through now, there's been this pronounced dead period, or close to it, and a lot of people trying to figure out why. That's a story for another day. But here we are. And uh, we have Gabrielle, but it has been struggling, and it'll eventually, uh, probably will become a hurricane, and then this ace count will start to go up. But are we going to get to the average, which is about 122, or above average? That's going to be hard to do, to be honest with you. And again, a lot of reasons as to why, but let's don't worry about that for now. Instead, let's look at what's going on out there for the time being. Now, this is interesting. I put my thumbnail together before the 2 p.m. Uh, tropical weather outlook came out. So the yellow area, this is off our interactive map that I did a little screen grab from, looks different at 2 p.m. because I think the Hurricane Center is starting to pick up on, and I mean, of course they are, they're the best in the world at this stuff, what the models have been showing that I think something's going to happen down the road a piece, and that's what we're going to discuss as we keep going forward here. We also have Gabrielle, and this is going to be a minimal threat I think to Bermuda, probably passing to the east of Bermuda over the coming days. Meanwhile, in the East Pack, where things have been busy pretty much all season, continuing to be busy, a couple of areas to watch over the coming days. The GFS back and forth with this one, sometimes it brings it up into this direction. The Euro has always been kind of out, and now the GFS seems to be heading towards the Euro's thought, so to speak, and uh, we shall see. But, you know, the the East Pacific has been where the most activity has been. And uh, that brings me over to, I wanted to show you this from Dr. Ryan Maui. The Western Pacific, been pretty quiet out that way, no longer. It's getting ready to really ramp up. We're going to have a couple of very powerful typhoons, including one that's going to go through the strait here, uh, south of Taiwan, north of the Philippines, I won't say the mainland, but you know what I mean, the bulk of the, basically northern Luzon, and head towards maybe Hong Kong in vicinity, and this one is going to be a doozy. I'm going to have to catch up on what our friend Josh Morgerman is doing. Surely he is on a plane already heading over here. Admittedly, I haven't checked his Twitter yet to see, but this would have Morgerman's name written all over it. Then there's another one that's going to be developing up here, and I think this is a clue that we are finally starting to see the northern hemisphere stability issues begin to get reversed a little bit because we're getting development and pretty prolific strong development at that in the west pack we're going to get development in the eastern pacific it looks like again and then i think we have a shot at breaking this drought if you will not that anybody's complaining i mean we're coming up on a year since a very devastating one two punch there from helene and milton so if we could stay quiet the rest of the season, that would benefit a lot of people, goes without saying. But I think we're starting to see the signs here that that question of how will it end, um, you know, it, it might not end as pleasant as we want it to be, although I don't know that for sure. I want to be very straightforward about that. But I see signs like this, and I start to wonder, 
is this going to eventually spill over uh, into the Western Hemisphere? So we'll see. All right, looking at the satellite animation for it this afternoon, let's flip over to yellow here to highlight everything. One area of interest here, another one down here. Again, not too much consequence expected from either of these systems, but we will watch, certainly. And then the Caribbean and Gulf, nice and clear for now. We'll see how long that lasts. There's Gabrielle, still kind of sheared, but deeper thunderstorms starting to get more organized around the center of circulation. And uh, again, that's going to move off generally in this direction. It does look like somewhere around like that. Bermuda sitting right there. Should, 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 should go to the east of Bermuda. Probably see them under a tropical storm watch at some point. That wouldn't surprise me. Meanwhile, sliding farther to the east. Check this out. Wow. I mean, it almost looks like a gyre itself, a little cyclonic gyre of uh, sand and dust coming off of Africa. But this energy down here, fairly low latitude, that is going to come quietly across. And then I think it could start to blossom over in this area in the coming days because climatology, yes, and the overall background state starting to become more favorable overall, less of this stable atmosphere, more instability setting in. You know, you got the energy source, uh, the tropical wave, the seedling, and the models are starting to pick up on it. And the uh, loop is refreshing. How about that? So, yeah, uh, a lot to watch, but nothing threatening right now. Generally speaking, it's certainly in the Western Hemisphere. Way over again near the West Pack, though, that's going to be a different story. So, look, as we look at the keys to the rest of what's happening, let's frame this up, if you will indulge me here, like a football game, okay? Four quarters, we're in the fourth quarter, just starting. That's the way I look at it. And there are keys to how things should work out. And it's, let's say it's a high-stakes game at that. A lot riding on it. And the analogy here is we thought this was going to be a very, very busy season. Not historically busy, but it was forecast to be above average. And we are anything but. And we've gone over some of the reasons why, mainly very stable atmosphere overall, kind of dry at the mid-levels and warm, and we call that capped, basically. A lot of other reasons, too, a lot of nuances here and there, but that's the general easy way to understand it. Things have just been too stable, too warm uh, in the upper levels, and you don't have that cold over warm. Anyway, this idea of moving into the fourth quarter, what do we expect, and how will everything come to an end? Because there have been... Again, indulge me here with this analogy. A lot of false starts, a lot of flags on the play. 91L is a great example of that. And, you know, just a lackluster season compared to what we thought would happen, right? So the science we thought was going to tell us, okay, it's going to be very busy, and it has not. So we're trying to figure out, well, what will the end game be like? Because it is not over yet. Just like when you look at the fourth quarter of a game where... Either team could still come back and do something notable, right? That's what I'm going with here. We don't know what's going to happen as we get into that fourth quarter, but we can look and see what some of the elements are that could shape it. And one of those, of course, sea surface temperatures and the anomalies. Very warm, relative to average, all throughout the main development region into especially the western part of the basin over here. The La Nina look to the Central Pacific and elsewhere, the equatorial region. We've been over this time and time again. We know that this is there. And it's not going anywhere. That is still definitely part of it, right? Part of the overall background state. Interesting, too, as I mentioned the other day, the Northeast Gulf at or slightly below average in a eh, fairly decent area, I guess, compared to where it could be. And we'll take any break that we can get. Uh, but that being said, I do want to show you this. Uh, it's still, you know, 80, 81, 82 degrees Fahrenheit, about 28 Celsius. So even though it's below average, um, that doesn't mean that it's too cold and we, you can't get any hurricanes to cause some problems up there. And maybe we make it through the rest of the next two months plus roughly 10 days of September and we don't have any problems. But you know, one would argue that it's going to be very difficult to get out of this type of a pattern when you see everything else, the West Pack, the Central Pacific here coming to life, Eastern Pack, whatever, uh, and all of this. I think we could have some problems. It just makes sense, logically, that we're going to be headed towards an end game here 
that could feature some big impacts. And I'll show you some of the modeling, how it's heading in that direction as well. Uh, looking at the mid-Atlantic and western Atlantic sea surface temperatures, mid-Atlantic region landmass-wise, generally below 80 everywhere to the north and west or the left of whatever. The black line that I just put in there, um, so your shelf water up here is cool. Pamlico Sound has cooled off Chesapeake Bay as well. Uh, but, yes, you can get a hurricane running the coast, and if it's moving fast enough, which they typically do once you get into September, especially October, I mean, Hazel came up through here and got all the way up into Canada, and it was still a hurricane way back in 1954 in mid-October. So, yeah, we can still have major problems, lest we forget. All right, so what about the current situation in the model world? And remember, the caveat, always, the computer models are meant, uh, merely noise from the future. And I say that not to besmirch them, but... These are not forecasts. This is just numeric weather prediction. The forecast gets made by human beings. I mean, you can look at it as a forecast if you want to. That's up to you. But these are just, again, when you combine everything, it's just all noise from the future. This is predicting the future using math and physics. And now with AI, it just starts to get mind-boggling, right? So this is what the GFS, I mean, we could I'd probably look at this for an hour not many people would watch, but uh, everything seems to be short form these days. But we'll stick to the typical GFS Euro combo for now. And a little bit of a hint at the end here from a, a post that I've got at the new AI stuff. But what do we got out there? Let's just get with it. Uh, we use blue here. There's Gabrielle, the vorticity signature, not very impressive currently. But over the next couple of days, it gets its act together. Finally becomes a hurricane, it does look like, to the east of Bermuda, which if you're wondering, is right there. So that's a pretty comfortable distance away. Maybe some squally weather, uh, but at least it'll be on, the hurricane will be, would be hurricane uh, to the east of Bermuda. So that's good. And this is about 96 hours out, and our would be hurricane strengthens way up over the northern latitudes in the subtropics. Then keep your eye on this piece of energy. That's what was sitting over here as we started and it's gradually, quietly making its way across the open Atlantic down there. And that's what they mention in the National Hurricane Center uh, outlook, that some slow development of this system is possible through the middle and latter part of next week while it moves west-northwestward. And I would add in there just my take on things quietly in parentheses. Of course, they're not going to do that. But it is. It's going to move kind of quietly. Nobody's going to really notice it too much unless it starts to flare up. But that is energy down there. That vorticity, that is already there. It's already off the coast of Africa. And it comes across, this is four days, finally about five days. You can see it begins to sharpen, and it's to the south of this uh, area of high pressure, which itself is pretty far to the south. You got the dying hurricane or transitioning hurricane to extratropical, way up in the northern latitudes. And then this system quietly comes along so that by day eight, Seven and eight, seven here. Uh, it's, you know, that, that would be something we would probably have if this came to pass exactly as the GFS is showing a week out. Now, again, noise from the future. We've been burned on this before. 91L, models were all over it, most of them. And then they were like, nope, sorry, we were wrong. But it's later in the year. The instability is getting, gaining more traction. I've already covered all that. So there is more reason to believe that we could be seeing something here in the next week or so. More and more of the models are starting to show it. The operational and the ensembles, the physical models and the AI models. So we shall see. So that's what we show a week from today. What about the Euro? First, let me go all the way back to last night's run. And uh, this is the 0Z run on the Euro. Very similar evolution with Gabrielle right there. And the Euro has all that energy sitting off Africa as well. So let's see what the Euro was showing uh, last night. Let's go to this one right here because that one is... There we are. This was the, the three-hour increments, which is what I wanted to show you. So let's move the Euro out to one week. And by the way, it's also very similar in the position of Gabrielle to the east by a comfortable distance uh, from Bermuda. So that's good. 
So let's move this on out to one week out into the future. There we are, and the euro has something as well. It is a little bit farther to the west than what the GFS has, and I can show you. We can compare and contrast GFS farther south and east, euro a little bit. Of course, it's a little bit, eh, whatever. I mean, you get the idea. Both global models show something of interest in about a week in the southwest Atlantic, and that is very, very important. Now we're starting to get some agreement. That is from our old traditional, I say old, how about that, numeric models. I don't even know what you call the AI stuff anymore. If the, Because I see people refer to the GFS and the Euro as the physical models. So what in the world are the AI models? i got to catch up on all this stuff, man. I'm going to become a dinosaur and lose out real quick if I don't know exactly, as best I can, what all this stuff means. That being said... One of the people that's following this, and there are a lot of people, by the way, I want to commend at least the group of people that I see um, on either I follow or that show up in my algorithm side. A lot of smart people out there that know how to post helpful, actionable information without the scary headlines and the ridiculousness that you see in some other circles. And one of the positive ones, of course, is Florida Tropics here. Um, and the old Google Deep Mind, I was joking with a friend of mine last night, uh, somebody that was in a coma for like the last 30 years, right? They wake up today and you say, hey, by the way, uh, check this out. Maybe they're a hurricane buff. And they look at this image and go, whoa, what is that? Uh, well, that's the Google Deep Mind. And they go, Google, the search engine? I mean, right? How did we get here? Anyway, Google Deep Mind is really lit up, as you can clearly see. That's from the Zero Z Sweet from last night. Bottom line to wrap all of this up, how will it end? I think it's going to end on the busy side. Now, that's not November, but the end part of the hurricane season, this last quarter, so to speak, going back to the old football reference, I think the fourth quarter could uh, feature quite a few plays and maybe a touchdown or two uh, going and stretching that out as much as I can. So, Seriously, we got to stay on top of everything. It's not over until it is over, until the horn sounds, the whistle is blown, and the clock reaches zero. All right? So I'll take the weekend and chill, get more well, doing fine. Again, just one of those late summer colds. You know how it is. It's annoying as heck. Nobody has time for it. It knocked me down a couple of days. Got my voice back enough to be here today. So I'll rest a little bit more over Saturday, Sunday, and then Monday... I'm betting that we're going to have quite a bit to talk about. Until then, have a great weekend. Enjoy the football because that's pretty much the season we're in. Hey, that's how all that works, doesn't it? It sure does. And by the way, a lot of meteorology schools are big football schools as well. So there's that. From all of us at Hurricane Track, I'm Mark Suttoth. I'll see you again Monday.